first off, thanks for coming on here. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> of course. So, how would you describe what exactly you do online? Like, what is your YouTube channel about? And really anything else you got going on that you want to get into? How would you describe all that? You know, it's funny you ask this question because even myself recently, I've been like, what is it that I do? Because I feel like every time I make a video, every time that I um, think I know what I'm doing, it evolves into something else. Like spirits like, oh, this is the next chapter. This is the next uh, offering. So recently it's been so, so unique and different. And so just to kind of sum it all up, I would say, you know, the past couple months, it was like three months ago, I had this download just drop in that was like, get on YouTube. It's time to go on YouTube. Um, and, you know, the ego, the mind was like, it's too late. YouTube, it's too hard to grow your channel. You hear all the things, you know, and, and something in me, my soul was like, no, you, it's, you have to start. That's where your audience is. That's where you're meant to share your message. And so I just started making videos and just started channeling messages that came through. And something that I would say I do is I say I'm a channel because a lot of the videos that I make, they're channeled. They're not just me kind of popping on here with my um, with my thoughts. It is me, it is Katie, but a lot of it is uh, information that I get shown through meditation or through um, just strong downloads that I'm, I'm told to share with the world. And so it started just a couple months ago where I just had that download to start and get on YouTube. And so um, just been making videos since, and I also do intuitive reading. So I'm an intuitive healer, um, and you could say psychic as well. So I do readings for people. I um, do light language activation. So um, that's something that I offer as well to my clients, to my audience, is I help actually activate um, uh, like codes in their DNA. So I'll do light language channeling, which is essentially energy healing through sound, through frequency. And so I, I offer that as well. But yeah, I think my purpose here, what I'm really being shown to share with the world is the shift of what's happening on the planet, as you're probably aware, as a lot of what I talk about is, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot that's happening on Earth and during these crazy times. And so I've seen lots of um, future timelines that are playing out and things that are kind of occurring on our planet and will be occurring. And so I feel it's like just not even just like my purpose, but um, it speaks to my heart to share this with the world because I see what it's helping people. Um, see in their life is a better way to live and tuning more into their hearts to to really live from their purpose and their mission here because I believe that everyone here on earth has a mission whether it's you know people say oh I don't have one I believe we all do I believe we're all here for a big purpose and so that's a big part of what I'm here to share in my messaging on um, not only on YouTube but also through my readings is really tapping into people's kind of like purpose here even though purpose is always evolving I can really tune in to see kind of everyone's trajectory right now like what do they need to do in their life right now to really step more into that life that they are here to live like tuning into their desires and um yeah creating a life of their dreams because i also do believe that that's a big part of what i'm here to share is helping people see that amidst the chaos amidst amidst the craziness that we're all aware of happening here on this planet um i do believe we also get to live a life that's beautiful we also get to pull in our desires, our dreams, and um, create a safe haven within our own life and, you know, awaken in our own life to the life that we want to create, no matter what's happening in the world. Um, it's our birthright to do that. And so I think to, you know, being in the spiritual space and myself, I remember getting into spirituality a few years ago, going through an awakening. I'm like, you hear all these people say, oh, you have to dive into the depths of your healing. You got to feel all the pain. It's like a bumpy road. Like, yes, it is. Yes, it's challenging. Um, we are here to feel our emotions and like let ourselves sift through all of the, the pain that we've gone through. But at the same time, we can simultaneously come back to love and live a life of love and um, find friendships that fulfill us and find careers that we so much enjoy. So I think that's a big thing that I pulled myself out of was this healing cycle and trap of thinking that I need to be healing forever and need to be like in my pain in the darkness. I have lots of friends too, like they can just cry for hours. It's like in their shadows and it's beautiful. But I think it's our duty too to pull ourselves out of that and come back to really why we're here, which is we came here to experience, we came here to enjoy. Yes, we're all on a very big mission to rewrite all these systems that have been built off of fear that are not built out of love. But that doesn't mean that we can't enjoy our life now. So 
going back to what your question was, I think that that's really what I want to share to the world because it's not a big common message in the spiritual space, in the conscious space. It's very much fear. Um, a lot of it's fear based, not all of it, but sometimes it can drive us into these spirals of like, oh dear God, what's happening on the planet? Like, it's going to get worse. Like, um, mm -hmm. do you think they're running everything, the reptilians? It's like so funny to me because it's not that serious, you know? And I've talked about this before, but, you know, we're here, I believe, for Mother Earth and for humanity. And so, yes, there's lots of people in power that shouldn't be there, but we're rewriting the script. And I believe myself, you, all of us are here uh, waking up to really the realization of like how our world should be, how humanity should be. And that alone is all we have to do. And when we wake up to that, spirit, God, divine, whoever we resonate with is always going to put us on the path to, um, yeah, our, our purpose and what we're here to do. We don't have to really stress or be in fear or be aware and like do all the healing at all times. Uh, there's a time and place for that. But I think it's like anchoring yourself back into love, like pulling yourself out of that trap of fear, stress, because I don't believe that we come here to do that. I don't believe that that's the reason that we're here. I believe we're here to love. I believe we're here to experience all the joy. Um, and another thing too that I share a lot is like, I believe myself as a lot of us do, but especially a lot of the children that are going to be coming onto the planet just are such representations of joy of that like playful childlike energy. My friends and I always say this, like, you know, a lot of my messages on YouTube are very serious sometimes, but I am like a weirdo off camera. I'm so just free, like living my life because um, life is so serious, yet it's simultaneously not at all serious. And it's just, to, we're here to play, we're here to have fun. So I think that's a big message too, is um, for people listening is knowing that, you know, you get to create joy. You don't have to be so serious all the time and be so terrified of the world. Like, you know, if we all thought that we would come here to be terrified and live in fear, like none of us would have actually come here. But I believe on a higher level, we all came here because we knew Earth was a wild ride. We were like, let's go experience <laughs> crazy epic shit, you know? So um, that, that's a big message that I feel is is resonant in, in my messaging. And also when I get on calls with people, like I'm not here to really disempower people, tell them about their blocks. I really, I see that we all have them, yes, but it's more like how can we actually, um, you know, see what gifts we have? How can we see what the mission is that we have and tie to, and like tune into that um, to just make our life more epic and more beautiful. Like I, I see life is so, so beautiful. Earth is such a beautiful place. We just have to tune into that perspective and that reality. You know, we can live in multiple, multiple realities. We can live in fear or we can live in love. Like which one do we want to choose? So that's essentially to answer your question a little bit about what I feel like I'm here to share with the world. Um, and it, like I said, it, it's changing every day. So I think it's one thing and then it evolves to something else. So um, I do believe I'm still in a space where I'm figuring that out as we all are. Um, but that's the beauty of life, right? We're always evolving and changing. We're not meant to be one thing for the rest of our life. It's, it's going to be boring if we do that. So, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Very well Amen. said. <laughs> but it all has to do with channeling love and becoming better people and actually enjoying this experience, would you say? Yeah. Say that again. Repeat your question. Would you say it all has to do with channeling love, becoming better people, and ultimately enjoying this experience? One million percent. I think that's really what it's about. And again, it sounds so simple, which is why I think a lot of people don't think it can be that easy. They're like, you mean love, just tuning back to love? It's that simple? Like life would be it a lot actually easier. Is. <laughs> yeah, it actually is. And so that's the thing. Another thing with my messaging and why I think it speaks to so many people that I've talked to is because it's such a simple message, but we've always bypassed it for so many, so many years, right? We've been conditioned, like I said, into this paradigm of fear and to thinking that in order to create the life of our dreams, especially, we've all been conditioned to think it has to be through hard work, through like mm. intense, intense um, dedication. And like, yes, we take action to get there, but it's not actually a grueling process. It's not supposed to be this like, really really hard difficult journey right it's supposed to be beautiful and so i think the more that we can all realize that as a collective it's going to get easier and i always say this too like believe in miracles miracles are um what we're it's our birthright as well and so i think it's something that's so far out of reach for some people um in their minds but on a soul level it's not at all like we can manifest things out of thin air we can create our life of our dreams it's all through thought um but our thoughts are kind of what we're rewriting we're trying to get out of that, that like paradigm of um, giving our power away to other people and taking it back on ourselves to say, you know what, I actually want this for my life. I'm going to think that when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to be able to create X, Y, Z, and it's going to be created. But we just have to kind of sift through 
um, that old paradigm to get there. So it's a little bit of a journey. We're in that. We're kind of rewriting it. But I believe that's where we're going. I believe that's where um, we're destined to go, you know, amidst everything. It seems a little like we're not there yet because we're not. But um, I believe it's a future timeline for all of us to reach is miracles and, and beautiful manifestations just popping out of thin air in our life. <laughs> Again, amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Now, yeah. what is the calibration look like like how do we tune in to this would you say it's through basic meditation and then naturally intuitively we just get these downloads and all of this becomes apparent so i always say it's through feeling and that goes for any emotion that we that we feel it's you know you might feel sadness you might feel anger we so much as humans try to bypass all of our emotions we try to negate the fact that we are sad we are angry and we shove it down and it's blocking our heart it's blocking us from expansion so i always say even though yes it's like love this beautiful life i always talk about joy love it's like to get there we do have to feel and so oftentimes i've experienced this recently through my expansion of you know the youtube growth it's been so beautiful um and, and more clients things like that but amidst expansion i've had to let go of a lot of old stories, old emotions and feelings. So I have had to feel it all. So I believe it's through feeling that we access this world. And so wherever, where anyone can, it's just tuning into your heart to feel like what's present in your life now. If it's sadness, if you need to let go of something that's been weighing on you, feel it. Don't shove it aside. Don't like bypass those emotions because the emotions are the gateway to our soul. I always say this, but it's true. I see this vision always. It's like when we tune into our emotions, we're almost creating this like pillar of light that shoots us onto a higher timeline. Um, but so many of us, like I said, we just shove away. I mean, I even to this day, because we've been conditioned, it's like um, to push away our emotions for so long. It was actually very hard for me to cry and release. It was just, there was a block there. But the more that we give ourselves that safety, and I think that's another thing is giving ourselves so much nurturing and love. I don't think a lot of people um, do this, especially in hustle culture these days. It's like, you know, hard work is what, where you're gonna, like, what's gonna get you to your goal. Like, you know, don't be a baby, things like this. These little, these things are ingraining this idea that feeling is bad and that nurturing yourself, loving yourself is bad. But we all have inner children within us. And so we have to really give ourselves that nurturing and that love and say, it's okay to feel, it's okay. If you wanna scream into a pillow, if you need to go out of nature and yell like to the rooftops, like do it because that's your body saying, hey, I need to let go of this energy because as we expand, we're going to feel more, like I said. So I think that's just a big key. And also I do believe in meditation. It's so powerful. Something that I do every day of practice is I will meditate for like 30 minutes in the morning and at night and in that time i am tuning into those desires that i want to pull in and recently i've been doing it for my current day so not thinking about a future timeline even though it's very powerful i believe we can create even more powerful um you know miracles in our life if we're thinking about that day that we're in now it's like being very present and just feeling into what that feels like what is it that you want to pull in who are the people you want to impact what's the life you want to create feel how beautiful that would feel because through feeling that's where we really um magnetize those things into our life because our feelings are like magnets essentially and so and i've i've learned so much of this from joe dispenza he's been such a great teacher in my life is like creating our reality through feeling it now and feeling our future now um and it's not this is something i talk about a lot too it's it's not spiritually bypassing for us to to do this it's not spiritually bypassing to feel good it's only when we push away our emotions and we shove those down that we're bypassing that those feeling centers so i think that to feel good, it's our birthright, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And I think that, yeah, creating this like loving feeling for the life that you have now is where your power is. And it's, I always say this to my, to people too, is it's, it will be like building a muscle. It's not gonna be like every day, you're just gonna be existing in love for life. It's definitely like a muscle you'll strengthen, but the more that you can tune into your heart, it's pulling you out of your mind, like you're dropping out of the mind, but the body is so used to being up here that when we drop into our hearts, it's like, what is what's happening here but you just gotta build that muscle you gotta keep tuning to love and something that can help a lot of people too is so simple again but it's gratitude and it's love for anything in your life right now like if you have a hard time living in that love state think of those people in your life that you love think of those 
foods that you love. Like do things that you love. Take care of yourself because it's building that strengthening of that muscle in you um, to exist in this state. So your body's actually going to adjust to being in love instead of fear and up here in the mind. So that's another thing as well that I think can help people is just giving yourself grace, knowing it's not going to be every day that you're existing in love. I know I make lots of videos where I'm like, I love life, but it's, I go through my own tri trials, tribulations as well. So give yourself grace if you feel the pain, if you feel like you're going through a dark time, because again, as we expand, we have to be letting go of all these old stories and parts of ourselves. We're essentially like killing an old version of ourselves who has existed in fear, like this shriveled up um ball of fear and so yeah give yourself grace and know that it's a journey and know that the more you you come back to the center of love knowing that it is your birthright it's not like something that you have to attain it's already you it's your soul because our soul is love um fear is the mind and it's this 3d reality but love is so resonant to our soul that it's not something that we have to like relearn it's it's within us we just have to open ourselves up to it so the feeling i personally believe is it's like the gateway to the love yeah. yeah. Simple. <laughs> I mean, we are love. We say yeah. it's in us, but you can come to find on this wavelength that that is us. Love is yeah. primary and the mind is secondary. Yeah. And how you just described, it's reconditioning over the span of, I mean, however long it takes to be able to see that because we already are that. We already are love. So it's how do we see that we are love? as yeah. much as we can despite the goings on of your life yeah. and the drama of your life and what the mind wants to tell you about the past or the future how do we work through that to yeah. see through it pierce the veil yeah and come into this sense of true identity of love which that doesn't even the l word doesn't even do it justice you know we think of love as like the disney movie kind of love but it's not yeah. like that it's some um, it's something that is truly only directly experienced. It's truly only subjective. It's God. God is love. It really is. It's in the Bible. <laughs> but um, it's not the word that we think of. You know, it's not the English definition of love with conditions and stuff like that. Yeah. There's in Sanskrit, prema, and um, there's agape. And there's many other words, but they none of them do it justice. It's truly only directly experienced within yourself to know that that yeah. is the truth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do you have something to say? I was just going to add to that and say, yeah, you know, it's funny. This existence is something that I always, like, I always feel will help people is imagine yourself, like, from a soul level, right? We all dropped in and our baseline is love. It's God. It's everything that you just described. It's not, we can't even conceptualize it. Like, the human mind, even what I share, I don't even fully have the whole understanding of what it is because it's such a high vibration it's like the core of who we are um and so when we drop in as humans into this 3d world we we lower our vibration so much from our baseline of love and that soul level that we really are in our hearts and so it's like we don't actually we're not relearning it we're actually shedding those layers to raise our vibration there so it's like a shedding of what's already within us like you said so it's with love is within every part of us it's within every part of the universe this entire earth it's just that almost we have like blinders i see it as humans mm -hmm. we all just have like dark glasses on and we're trying to like find our way um but if we just take the glasses off it's right there within us but for so many people it's it's hard right we're humans we have to we have to you know learn the lessons as we're here we're doing the work but um it's not this difficult journey to getting back to that it's just remembering that we are actually just remembering who we are and that's really the essence of this life i believe it's like remembering who we are and it's love and it's it's going to be a journey it's going to be rocky but it's so so beautiful and um yeah it's just a remembering that's, just all I was that's it every teaching <laughs> is a remembrance that's what i like yeah. to say if it's a valid teaching yeah. it's just a remembrance yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah and we say things like journey Right. I like yeah. to say that is what the journey is all about. But journey implies like you're here and then you got to go there. But yeah, in actuality, it's not a journey. <laughs> in one way, no. you could see it as a journey, is like the purpose of life, like what we're doing here, the work or the integration. But then in another way, it's like, well, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're just here to exist like we already are. And that's what's so hard for us to comprehend, even myself saying it. It's so hard for us to understand that, because especially when you get on the spiritual path, it's like, 
okay, well, there's got to be a reason we're here. So we're like here to do the work. We're getting somewhere. Yes, we are raising the, the frequency of this planet and of ourselves, but time doesn't exist. And so that's kind of the reason why so many of us have a hard time with not believing it's it's not a journey is because it's like, well, clearly we're trying to get somewhere. We're trying to go somewhere, but everything just is. My friends and I always say this, we're like, everything just is. We're just existing here. Um, but it's like the human can't comprehend that. But when you when you embody that or like you try to anchor that in a little bit, it gives you so much grace. Knowing, oh my gosh, I don't actually have to be anywhere. There's no rush. Like we're not rushing. And even though, yeah, we all have our own divine, unique lives and purposes here on this earth, you know, we're doing it now. We're doing it by just existence alone. I always tell people this too, like the light that we all have within us, it's not something that we raise your frequency. You know, I'm like, I got to get somewhere. No, you're already in, in your own life right now. The minute you were birthed out of your mother's womb onto this earth, you were doing your purpose. You're in it now. So just, I think that helps a lot of people remember, oh, yeah, I don't have to be anywhere. I don't have to do anything. Um, just live in love and, and follow your heart with everything too. I think when we follow our heart, we can, it will never lead us astray. It will always lead, always lead us to the next timeline, the next place. And I think for myself too, like the more I've done this and tuned into my heart, um, I've almost looked back on my life. I mean, I can talk about the past three months with my YouTube channel. I'm like, how did that even happen? Like, it feels like time just, I don't even know where time went and I'm just confused about what just happened in my life. Um, but that's just it. When you're following your heart, you almost bypass time. Time doesn't exist. And that's why, you know, when you're in, when you're consumed by time, you're most likely in the head and in the ego, which ego again wants to always comprehend like this 3D reality. But I think when you're following your heart, it's always going to lead you to the right place at the right time, the right people at the right time. And you're going to look back on your life and be like, oh my gosh, how did I even get to where I am? <laughs> so Yeah. It's almost like living in a different dimension. Yeah, a million percent. A million percent. I mean, you're percent. still yeah. here, obviously. You're still on Earth. There's still a lot of darkness and struggle. Yeah. But there's something different. It's a different flavor to living, you know? When you live out of spirit or intuition, there is just a different um, wavelength. It's the essence of when Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. It's mm -hmm. that. It's like you're not... You're in the world, but not of it, right? Yeah. You're perpetrating a new world to be born amidst this old world that doesn't yeah. actually even exist, to be honest with you. It's, yeah. yeah, it's hard to explain. And for anyone listening right now that doesn't know any better, they're like, what are these hippies talking about? These <laughs> people are crazy, right? You only know, <laughs> right? But you, if you know, you know. So it's just something that you tap into yourself and it becomes oh. apparent. And then at that point, we're just preaching to the choir. And um, yeah. so, yeah. yeah, on that note, unless you have something to say to that. Yeah, I was going to add one thing. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You, you put it spot on. You said, you know, it's almost like we're existing in a different dimension. And that's the thing is I always tell people this, um, you know, as we are collectively raising the frequency of this planet for anyone listening, that's essentially what's happening. And that's why. Even if you're not fully aware, you're like noticing that there's shifts, but you're like in world, the world's getting a little crazy. It's because everyone is waking up on a collective level to the chaos of what's been built out of fear. And we're rewriting the systems, the programming, this whole game is shifting. Um, and within each and every one of us, we can exist in that heightened frequency in our own lives. So I always say like, you know, even though the collective is we're all raising the frequency on an individual level. You can exist in the 5D frequency. And if for anyone listening, that just essentially means what you just said, Gary, is living through your intuition, living through love, living in this heightened awareness to everything around you. Your senses are heightened. Like you might have psychic abilities, like this connection to something greater, something more spiritual, that realm that you're existing in, you're essentially living in the, the fifth dimension amidst a 3D world. So it's not something that you know, you're chasing to get to. This is why I always say like, you have it within you now. We're already such high vibrational souls that you in your own life, and there's many people on this earth already doing this, existing in very heightened frequencies and dimensions amidst a world because the other thing is we're all living in our own reality too. You know, it's like there's 8 billion plus realities on this planet. And so the one that you create for yourself is your own. It's unique to you. So if you want to live in this 5D frequency, you can choose that. It's not something that's this far out of reach thing. It's just that on a collective level, the earth itself is yes, going to take some time to get to where we're all kind of collectively living in this heightened vibration. But right now, 
in this very moment, we can exist in that frequency. Because I've done it myself, Gary, I know you've done this, is where I'm just in my, I'm like out in the world and I'm around my soul, soul friends and I'm like feeling this intense love for life. And I'm like, this is not like I'm living in a different reality. And it's because I, I am and we are when you tap into those states. And I know everyone's done this, especially when you're in flow state. Uh, when you're doing something that you're in like your creative pursuit, you're just like, you know, or whatever, whatever it is that you love for life. Maybe you're with a loved one, you're in falling in love. That is you literally like in a heightened dimension. Um, it's just that again, the human can't perceive it that way because you're living in the world that everyone else around us, a lot of, most of the people are, are not at that, at that vibration, but you're in it. So it's just knowing that too, is you can tap into any sort of heightened frequency in your own life because it's your life it's your choice it's not that um you have to lower your your almost like awareness for other people and i've noticed this myself when i go <laughs> i was talking to my friend this the other day like uh, i never go to walmart and i went there the other day and i was like i entered a no another dimension it was so weird i was like i just felt like i had dropped into a different world and it's kind of like i did because a lot of the people around me were existing in a completely different frequency so uh, it's just funny to know that you can kind of be like bop in and out of different frequencies within your own life so which one do you want to choose you know um pretty weird to say that and for a lot of people it might be like that doesn't make any sense but it will make more sense the more that you um you like you tune into your heart and you have these experiences and um you know start to notice synchronicities and um, your intuition starts to tell you certain things in life. Life almost becomes this fairy tale and it becomes, I know myself, my life feels like a dream almost. I'm like, mm. I don't even fully understand like things that come into my life, the people that come into my life that I meet, it's just like right place, right time. And it almost becomes this, it's a dream. So it's, I feel for a lot of people, it can become that if we choose that and if we call that in for ourselves. So I hope that makes sense, but yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Life is but a dream. Yes. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. There's just so much that comes from this wavelength, mm -hmm. synchronicities, and right time, right place. You start to realize that coincidences aren't really a thing. Yeah. It's all for you. Yeah. It's just yeah. It becomes a little too perfect. Sometimes it's almost <laughs> too good to be true, and then the mind takes over and says, "No, no, no, no," and blah 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 blah. Yeah. But. Yeah, when you're in those flow states, it's so apparent and it's just it, it just makes so much sense that this is some kind of elaborate dream, you know, it's uh, yeah, that's it. It's just a dream. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> it's a beautiful yeah. one, too. It's a beautiful one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, is once you realize it's a dream, then it becomes a lucid dream and you can start to create it how you want. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's when the fun starts. A million percent. I always tell people it's like you, my friend and I always say this, you can customize your avatar. Like, what do you, how do you want to feel? How do you want to look? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? We get to customize it. This life is truly like a fairy tale land. I always tell people because it's just about believing that and knowing that. And again, for so many people, it's very hard to believe that. And it's even hard for my human brain to comprehend that because it's not been the way that the mass majority of people have lived their lives. But if we start to, as a collective, see that and believe that and say, oh, actually, no, we can literally live the life that we want. And that's another thing I wanted to mention is where we are headed into this 5D frequency. It's a world of sovereignty and sovereignty is just basically a self-governing world where we're creating our life. We are writing the rules for our own life. How do we want to live? Not following what the government or these people are telling us we need to do in our life it's actually taking back that role on ourself and saying i get to choose and so <laughs> i always tell people too is pulling yourself out of victim mentality because when we get pulled into this mindset that we're the victim of our reality we give all of our power away and it's not to negate we've all gone through very challenging things in our life we've all gone through such immense pain and and just a lot of turbulence i so so feel that especially if you're conscious you're waking up it's like a death you're watching your old self die because you're waking up to the reality of your existence um but when we take back the power and say you know i create my life i create my reality and you let go of the victim mentality no matter what has happened to you that is taking your power back because that's saying i get to create whatever i want because the minute we give our power away the minute we say they did that to me um i'm not you're not in power anymore and so how could we ever collectively change the script back to us as self-governing create that life for our dream of our dreams for ourselves. if we believe that other people um write the rules right so that's just mm -hmm. something as well and so 
sovereignty is a big thing theme in my life that I've been just like really tuning into and seeing is it's the way and it's again very challenging for a lot of people to um believe that it's so so hard I know it's like the, the most collective like difficult challenge to get that hump to get over is taking back our sovereignty because it's so easy to blame other people it's so easy to blame the government to blame the elite to blame all these entities and people um but that's not helping anyone it's not helping us take back our own power and so um i just think that yeah believe that you're the writer of your own script your own story and that's going to really pull you into that like 5d frequency within your own life to create miracles in your life um yeah i think it's important for people to remember that yeah it's interesting because we get this essence of sovereignty that we are the creator or co-creator of this entire thing yet there is also an essence of surrender too as in we know we can do whatever we want but mm -hmm. that's a sort of luciferian right and i know I'm, I'm quoting the bible a lot i've been reading <laughs> the bible every night but there's a lot of truth in it if you know how to look at it in the right yeah. way seriously mm -hmm. so that's luciferian that's like the archetype of lucifer is ultimate freedom you can do whatever you want chaos essentially like you're creating something that isn't it doesn't have any kind of order to it so in this essence is like we surrender even though we know we have sovereignty we surrender to some kind of greater order the order of love which we spoke of before so that's what i find interesting about this it's like even though i know that i have the power to do really whatever i can create whatever like we said this is a lucid dream i'm not because that's not what I want. You truly realize what you really want to create. And yeah. that is aligned with love, compassion, cooperation, better world, joy, harmony, yada, yada. It's all toward a surrender, not of chaos. It's like a surrender toward just, yeah, love. I don't have any other better word for it. It's just like, um, yeah, do you find that? It's an interesting, like, and it's perplexing to me. It's like freedom, yes, freedom, ultimate freedom. It's so beautiful. But I'm not going to go and exercise that ultimate freedom and cause chaos like in Grand Theft Auto, you know, with the cheat codes and just get five stars. Gamers know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to find this essence, this way of living the Tao and live according to that because I think essentially... It just comes down to that's how you be happy. It's like you yeah. exercising your right to freedom and doing whatever you want isn't really happiness, right? Yeah. It's like living according to your dharma of how you were born, right? There's a certain blueprint to how we were all born. So it's like exercising your expression of a human being in that, in that dance, in that form. And yeah. that is how we find happiness. So it's like a balance. Summing yeah. this up, it's like a balance between surrender in ultimate freedom and then i think that is the middle way toward peace happiness and harmony in our lives one million percent i mean i totally agree because the other thing i share with people is you know forget manifestation forget creating the life of your dreams living in love we should just be living in love just because it is our core essence it's who we are at our core and so if you get nothing out of living in love if you get no none of your dreams if you get you know none of all those material items we want to pull in but you're just living in love that's the essence of why we're here and so i always share with people you know it's a, a byproduct of us living in love is living in our dream life because we can't not pull in those very things that are in alignment with our highest um like the highest part of ourself existing in euphoria and in love but at the same time knowing that like when you're in love and so yeah what i'm saying is like also i thought we're going to pull those things in but that's not really the purpose if the purpose is to exist in this euphoric state because as we do this whoever you resonate with universe god source divine angels high, like guides it doesn't matter will start to send you as your frequency is in this aligned state within your highest self will start to send you such beautiful magical synchronicities miracles all those things we keep talking about like these dreamlike experiences on your path because you are in alignment with source with god and so you're literally attracting the most beautiful life when you're in this so it's it's supposed to be a surrendered experiment and surrendered state and something too that i see so much and um <laughs> I've been caught in this. I think a lot of us have, you know, especially when you get into either manifestation or mindset, it's like hustle culture, like 
discipline, very, very like kind of what you were describing is almost like this, um, what analogy you use is like, it's like this race to get all these things and pull it in because it's like people can get attached to realizing that they create the reality. So they're like, oh, I'm going to create everything. I'm going to do all this. It's very forced. It's very manipulative. And not that it's bad, but true living from love, true manifestation and this 5D frequency I always talk about isn't supposed to feel forced. It's not supposed to be this manipulating behavior. It's just us like literally surrendered to our highest good. And through that, that surrendered state paired with creating quote unquote our dreams, it's it's a dance. So it's like you were saying that surrender with, with the creation, pair those together. It's it's literally like beautiful. It's a beautiful existence. It's just a lot of people can go one one side or the other. I've seen a lot of people just like, I'm so ready to life, like yeah. chilling. And these like free hippies just kind of like, um, you know, just living their life. And it's like, that's beautiful too. But then there's also the people that are just so, so driven, create everything. And it's just like very much mind based. And so it's like, how can we bring that in the middle and realize that not either one isn't like perfect. It's not that one is better or worse. It's just like, it's not supposed to feel like a forced behavior. You know, when you're in alignment with your truth, with your um, highest good, it's a very effortless way of living. It's a very free life. And I think that um, it's again, not normal or easy for the human to wrap our head around that. We're like, no, it has to be one way or the other. We have to do this, we have to do that. But it's breaking down the contract because our soul and love doesn't have rules. It doesn't have, um, it's not in the mind, but we're shattering the ego in this existence. And that's what I've always been shown by my guides is it's like, I see that humanity is here and like where we're going, or I'll better say we're here, where we're going is up here. And there's like almost this baseline and it's shattering through that, the mind of what everything we've always thought was true and the rules about um, how to pull in our dreams. But so many people get caught up in like the old ways, you know? So I think, I don't know that even where I was going with that, but um, <laughs> I think, yeah, it's just like, it's supposed to be a dance between surrender and creation. I think when you put those two together, it's like, I see this like spiral. You're just like so supported and pulling everything in versus like a straight line either way. We're not meant to do that. You know, it's coming back into, into the heart here. And through that we're guided. And if, and like I was saying, if if there's nothing you do, if you don't do anything, like you don't go out to create anything, um, you're just living in love alone, that in itself, you're going to be amazed at what happens in your life. Like I've had periods where I just completely let go of all the things I wanted to like manifest in my life. And I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm surrendering to my heart right now and I'm going to live in love and just enjoy where I'm at. That's where everything clicked. Everything started to happen because I just let it go and I was just living in my heart. And so, um, again, such simple principles here, but it's powerful. And there's a reason why they're simple. It's not supposed to be this overcomplicated um mm. so yeah. yeah it's not supposed to be complicated no no simple and very subtle the path of love is very subtle very very subtle yeah. it exists in all the little moments of our life it doesn't have to be grandiose you don't have to start a podcast or a youtube channel yeah all of us can embody love very subtly mm-hmm. with yeah. all the people in our community and in our lives it's something just hmm it's like it changes everything but it also from an outside point of view doesn't really change much it's it's just like you don't have to become jesus i guess is what i'm trying to say <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> you can use him for certain lessons in your life for sure but it's like all in the small moments that might be a cliche might be a cliche but it's true really <laughs> all in the small moments of our life is how this new world this new wavelength yeah. comes about. Yeah. You know? And it's just like thinking simply that the other person is you. It's really that easy. It's like when you look into someone's eyes, you see yourself, right? And yeah, I don't know. That's just like, that should just be, it should just be innate, but we got some stuff to work through, I guess. Yeah. Someday yeah, we'll and get there. Yeah, a million percent. And that's another thing too is, where we're really headed is we're leaving separation to come to unity consciousness. And again, it's not natural for us to know that the soul knows that we understand that we are all one, like I am you, you are me, but the human cannot wrap its brain around that. And this comes back to like the victim mentality is it's so funny, right? We try to say that, um, like we, we give so much sympathy to people that are going through things because you know, it's through love, like give compassion to people. But when we put someone else as a victim in their life, 
we immediately put ourselves in victim mentality and believe yep. that we're separate or versus saying what they're going through they chose that i chose what i'm going through we all chose this and believe, coming back into that centered like, understanding that you know we are all one and again it's, it's so challenging for people to realize that because it's so not normal we were this whole existence and especially the powers that have been at play have been creating a world out of separation, right? I mean, you see it with politics, like you don't have to even like go into that, but it's just, you know, which side is better, which side is right or wrong. There's always a, a left and a right versus just, we're actually all the same. And so um, I think that's another reason for, for the challenges a lot of us go through is it's just that like separation mentality versus coming back to understanding that we are all part of the great one source. Like we're all souls, but we're all fractals of, of source of God, of whoever you resonate with. and um and we're love we're just love and so um yeah i think too that's just a big a big principle i've been sitting with recently is like unity consciousness and just knowing that if there's anything you do in your life just knowing like you are love and we are all one like i'm everyone in your life too is a reflection of you so if you don't like something in reality like well it's reflecting something within you and that's not to scare people it's not to make you feel like if you have toxic friends it's actually a beautiful thing because you start to realize oh wow if they're a reflection of me, like, I want to change that because I actually want better friendships, better experiences, and you get to change that for yourself. Um, and something random, but on this path too, I, the one thing I've learned in my life that is a beautiful representation of magic and why I believe magic exists is I have pulled in friendships that have come out of thin air with women that I don't even, like, we've met in the most random places and they're like, the exact representation of me like soul soul friends and that's just it when you start to know who you are when you start to love yourself and love the world around you and kind of what you're saying is every day just being just sending love to to the life that you have and being grateful for those things in your life you will pull in people who are the most beautiful like loving lights in your life and i truly believe this for everyone as well listening is we all have um I mean, we're all soul family at the end of the day, but we all do also have like strong soul connections out there. And when you start to know that for yourself, you start to claim that you start to see who you are and love yourself. And again, love, love your existence and, and grateful for your life. The right people are going to flock into your life. Like it's actually crazy. Uh, I already even see this with clients nowadays, like people that are just drawn and it's, it's all energy. It's just energy. That's all this existence is. It's like when you attune your energy to love or those high, high vibrational frequencies that you want to feel, you're going to see reflections of that in your life. But it's when we, um, you know, fall back into the victim mentality, we fall back into the fear and the doubt that we get experiences like that. And so, um, what do you it's like if anyone listening i would just say like what do you want to see more of in your life and whatever that is match that energy become that energy become who it is that you want to be how do you want to feel when you wake up that sovereignty mindset and magic is going to start flowing in your life miracles like out of thin air i i'm literally i experienced this in my own life which is why i am so passionate about sharing this with people um it's not bypassing to feel good like i keep saying it's not bypassing to to believe that for yourself believe you can have a better life believe you can have a better future and friendships and um relationships and career whatever those things are like you can have that but you have to match the energy of that and attune to that frequency within your own heart um it'll take a little time but as you do it you'll see reflections in your life and you're going to be like whoa what is this it's a dream <laughs> there it is <laughs> Yeah. Moral of the story is life's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like attracts like. Love brings love. Very true. It all becomes very resonant. This intuitive living is just extremely resonant. It's like a higher intelligence that enters one's life and you just know what's good for you and what isn't good for you. You know, you find out that Walmart might not be the best place to be in the world. <laughs> <laughs> right i feel that I when i go to walmart, walmart but but it's just an experience that's for sure <laughs> yeah you just well yeah point of my stories you just know there's a certain almost like a for me it's like a yes or a no maybe i'm just simple-minded simple-hearted but i just when i'm in a certain situation with people that i know i shouldn't be in there's this like you gotta go gary you gotta go or yeah. on the opposite side if i'm with somebody that is very welcoming loving i'm supposed to be there there is this just ah it's like a nice hug you know like a, yeah it's a comfort <laughs> there's something that's just like yes or no it's this thing in my head yes no it's constantly in my brain or yeah. my my being 
that's going off. It's like this, no, this, yes. So yeah. do you feel that with you? It's like this very subtle yet powerful resonance that guides you along. Oh my gosh, a million percent. And that's something I was going to go add on to that is I think if there's one thing that someone could learn to do to just like start to everything we're talking about and to this life within your own self, like an awakened state of love, pulling in these miracles is following your intuition. Again, it sounds so obvious to people, but 99% of people do not follow their intuition in the world. We just don't. We just are learned, we are taught to, to lean on logic and the mind that we naturally pull in experiences that we want to see less of, yet we continue to see more of because we're following logic over our heart because our intuition is our heart, it's our soul. It's literally the voice of our soul speaking to us. So anytime that we don't follow our intuition and we go against it, we're gonna keep getting reflections of old parts of ourselves, old stories, old paradigms that we don't wanna see yet we're continuously living, which is why so many people I see are still living in um, a life they don't want to be living in and they're in these victim mentalities why is this happening why is this happening well what energy are you following what what guidance are you following and i think this is such an important muscle to, to strengthen because yes it is again strengthening a muscle it's not our bodies are not used to um following like the intuitive nudge that our body is telling us we go straight up to the mind that if you can start to follow your intuition in your life and start to really sit with the littlest things you know this starts with such small things as you know whatever food you're meant to buy that day like really tuning in what do i actually want like what is it that i want and you know what any anything in your life like if there's people in your life too i think this goes for the same like we all so i know everyone is capable of this we all have that feeling when we meet someone where we're like i don't know about this person something just feels off yet something and so many people it continues to be friends with these people to hang around these people regardless of what their intuition is saying and it's literally like shutting off the voice of your soul and that's the like the saddest thing for our soul is i, I literally see like our, our guides and our soul like oh why do you do that because it's like when we attune to our intuition we are guided on such beautiful lives and paths and timelines that again it comes back to the, the surrender and, and and living a life of full surrender because things just start to flow in because we're following a soul guidance versus a mind that was completely built off of fear. So I think that's just important for people to note is that um, as you do, Gary and I, it's like follow your intuition because it knows exactly where you're headed. It's never going to make logical sense. It's never going to literally ever make sense in our, in our minds. The mind, it bypasses anything the mind can never comprehend because I see the mind as like this little cage and our intuition is like the whole world. It's connected to source. It's our soul. So um, just know too, when you start to follow your intuition, fear will naturally arise because you're, you're like, what, what am I doing? This is not what I'm used to doing. Um, breaking through that fear regardless and trusting the voice of your soul and like your heart, it's going to lead you down such beautiful paths. Um, because again, most of the world isn't doing this. Most of the world is not following this inner guidance and following the pathway to their higher timelines to the life that they're destined to create in this life. And I believe when you start to do that, when you anchor into your intuition, again, the theme of this, I think, uh, podcast is just like, you're going to see beautiful miracles in your life. You're going to see people that flood in like crazy. And it's, I will say as well for me, you know, years ago when I was letting go of toxic friendships of toxic people and things in my life and, you know, quit drinking and all these things, it was so uncomfortable. My body was like, no, like, I don't want to do this. Like, I'm going to have no friends. You know, the logic comes in of like, well, you're going to have no friends. And then your family's going to think you're like this. And then, you know, everyone else is going to think you're this way. Or if you quit your job, you're, it's like all the logic, but why do we attach that? Right. It's, it's just fear. So I think it's just something to note too, is it's, it's such a dance. It's such a journey, but let yourself, um, I don't want to say the word journey because it's going back to that. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, yeah it's just like it's easy once you anchor in that and you start to just say you know what and you can even do this through intention i say every single morning i intend to follow the guidance of my soul today so it is and that intention is just like anchoring you into your soul um that's a tangent but yeah i think it's important no, good. Yeah. <laughs> intention yeah. very true it opens up the gates mm -hmm. intention i think is the start of that surrender it's almost like a prayer right if yeah. you truly intend you say what do you got to do or what do I have to do today? You know, um, thy will be done, right? Yeah. And lead with that. And um, yeah. again, it's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> Intentionality. Yeah. 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 And I think for a lot of people, if 
people find it hard to follow because I've found a lot of people find it almost hard to follow their own guidance. Like thinking again, I have all the power, like I have a higher self, I have a soul that can guide me. Like what? Like it's it's almost unnatural that knowing too, you do have, everyone has a team of, of guides. You also have God source again, whatever higher power word that you resonate with, not to believe that it's outside of you and that you're separate. Like, you know, a lot of um, religious teachings, not, not to hate on them, but just saying it, it's separation mentality, but knowing that that is still a part of you and that you are a part of the one great whole. And that if you ever need guidance, if you ever need support in times where you're finding it hard to trust in your intuition, you feel, you can call upon any higher power, any, any of that, those words that resonate with you. Um, I found helps a lot of people just have a little more trust in themselves versus assuming it's like their own, their own soul and body, you know? So, um, yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. well yeah that might be a good note to wrap this up at I don't have anything else to say Uh, do you have anything else you want to say that you want to get off your chest before we wrap this up let's see I just always hear this and I think this is important for people to hear is knowing again give yourself grace in this journey know that when you are Because what we're doing is we're literally everything we're talking about in this entire podcast episode is like very hard for a lot of people to comprehend again, because it's so, so crazy out of this world, yet so simple that so many people just can't believe that it's going to be that easy. So I just say for anyone listening, like give yourself grace in this journey to know that, you know, everything I've talked about is like what we deserve. It's not about something you have to attain. Like our soul deserves love because we are love. It is who we are at our very core essence. And so with that reminder, and even if, again, it's challenging for you to believe that, just set that intention for yourself every day. Say, I am love. Say these affirmations. And I think a powerful thing for people to do as well is, which a lot of people don't actually do, is stare yourself in the mirror. Mirror work is so powerful. I think when we stare ourselves in the mirror in our eyes, The eyes are the portal to the soul and it it allows you to connect with love and with who you are. And so um, if you are somebody who just, yeah, finds it hard to do that for yourself or to love yourself, love your life, love where you are in your life, if you're going through a challenging time, the eyes are the portal to the soul. Go in the mirror and look at yourself and tell yourself, I am love. I'm going to have a beautiful day today. You're, you might not believe it. Your body might be like, um, but it's a slow journey of, of creating this life for yourself and, just being yeah, gentle on yourself in this journey, like, you know, and again, coming back to as much as I say, like, this life is so beautiful. It is, I'm very hyper aware that we are living in a very challenging time. Like I always want to mention that to people is I'm not negating the darkness on this planet and the systems that are still at play that will be at play until they crumble. And it's hard, it's challenging and it's scary and it's painful and you know, there's natural disasters. There's lots going on on this earth because so much is crumbling. So just give yourself grace in this journey. Love yourself, nurture yourself, and know that too, when the pain arises, when feelings arise, when you're comfortable in your workplace, you're like, I literally just, I don't want to be here. Just remember, time doesn't exist here. You're right where you need to be. And love's always going to guide the way and your intuition is always going to guide the way. I know I just said a million things to remember, but I think those, I'm just going to close it down there because I don't want to overwhelm people, but yeah, give yourself grace and know you're so held, you're so loved. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's all I have. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, summing that up, give yourself grace and have faith, not blind faith, true faith, have faith in the process that we are in and of. And you might find that that faith will lead you into a better life, um, a better mindset, better perspective. Just it'll lead you to love. (laughs) So, yeah, a little bit of faith in the process. And that's it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on here, Katie. You have a very bright energy. It's uh, infectious. I can feel it through the screen and through time and space. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I can tell you truly do understand this stuff and this is firmly um, in your being. So yeah, keep doing your thing and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. It's so lovely and thank you everyone for watching. It was truly a pleasure. So yeah, so much love. <laughs> thank you and thanks to everybody that listened this long as well. You're a real one. I don't have anything else to say. Peace and love to you, Katie, and peace and love to the listener. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>